flock of yeah, a flock of diverse parrots. Oh, catchy as it. <laughs> and then I just love how they fit. They yeah, just spent ages trying to get the words. Well, oh, that right was the thing. I thought I right need something that's and... like a bit chunky. Yeah, Because yeah. I didn't just want to cheat and make it big text. Sometimes we had to make it slightly smaller oh, slightly text, smaller, yeah. so it would fit. You don't notice them. Eh? It looks perfect. And then these ones were all this kind of um, real safari feel. The uh, snake, Nuts. anaconda, dugong, which I had to. Tukonga. Uh, I thought, well, that one actually fits with a loan word. Skunk was going to be kanaka, like it's just, which happens to be Hawaiian relative language to Māori word for person, so not cool. Yeah, yeah, no, cool. no, that doesn't work. This um, one works so well, eh, for skunk. Yeah. Kukihonga. The one I wanted to play with for that wee shape, though, was kakinoa, was giraffe, like long neck. Oh. And then I thought... Did you, is that could, an established word or is that another? Well established. Oh, oh right, yeah, that's not mine. That does sound like... It's not a cut in a word. No. <laughs> but, but what I really wanted to do there was to put kaki roa and then uh, like kaki fero, which is like a... Uh, so kaki roa, long neck. Kaki fero, red neck. neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so great if they belonged in the zoo. But I didn't... Then I, I was talking to my mate about it who did the editing of this text and she went, you've gone too deep, bring it back. Oh, <laughs> it's oh. too much. <laughs> and then um, zebra, hepara and oriki for oryx. So, so oh, wow. much work went into that yeah, page yeah, yeah. and yet it just sits in the illustrations but it's yeah. hard to think of the the depth of the book. Yeah. Where the mastery totally. comes in this collaboration between the two of you, it's language rich but then you get to dive in, like, you know when you get to the end of a book or a story and you're like, man, I want more words. Mm -hmm. And the illustrations being kind of full and in sync with the tone of the story give you a place to dive into afterwards, even when the words are done. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes it feel like you get to stay there. Yeah, for those other conversations. I really love it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, there's an awful lot in the illustrations, eh? Like, you can just keep on, like we were saying before, just keep on finding new things. And, yeah, <laughs> and I mean, that for like, me, because that, this, that's a massive addition. Uh, and yet it fits seamlessly into the story. This part here, you know, oh, look at all the animals they've got. It's amazing. It's obviously seeking to explain that further. But then to hide little jokes in gives you a hint of the st style of the story that's coming. It gives you the tone, eh? a little kind bit of, of a reverence and a mm. little bit of, you know, whimsy and stuff. So it's really nice. Yeah, I like that. Totally. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the number of times, though, that I've read this story, we get to the end and people go, yeah, that was fun. That was cool. They can see him when he, the hippo, when he finally turns up. And then I'm like, did you spot him? And he was hiding in the story. And they're like, what, wait, what, what? And so you have to go back through. You go back through the end. Oh, my God, he's there. Oh, my God, there he is again. And it's just a different, yeah, it's a different route. It's that's an amazing really, premise. That's a good approach. Reading. I like that. Yeah. Read it once and then go, so. Hey, so did how you, observant are you? How many times <laughs> did you spot the I hippo? I like Liam. Yeah. Yeah.